Good evening everyone and it's indeed a privilege to be able to share with you my first ever vlog in our communication class and um, let's start. I, I actually met this person just recently in our class. And I never thought that someone like him was very far from my age, very different from my background, will can actually help me realize the best lessons I learned as a mother. His works and um, his ways made me reflect on how I live my life as a mom and whether my existence truly matters. I'd like to give it a twist and um, I'll be sharing with you how these lessons resonate with that of my son, JJ, who happens to have Down syndrome, who, like this person that we will be talking about, taught me not just to exist, but most importantly, to live this life. So, let's start. Here are the five important life lessons that I learned from Norbert Elias himself while I was raising my special son, JJ. where we are nurtured. That's lesson number one. Elias grew up in a society where he was very much affected by the aftermath of World War I and the rise of fascism in Europe. However, he used these experiences not to just accept the norm, but to challenge the existing practices of his time. And these were very evident in his writings. When Gigi was born, it was at the height of a very difficult financial situation in the family. I was young, I don't have any work, and my husband just started his career. He was just accepted. And um, he was very sick. He was hospitalized. He stayed in the hospital for about three months. And everything was really a mess. It was very difficult for us. However, um, because of his birth, we became determined to find ways on how to raise him, especially that during that time, specifically in Cebu, there were very few therapy centers around. But because of that scarcity, I used the internet, I tried all means to find ways in order to understand his situation and to learn from other parents so I will be able to help my son. The situation pushed me hard enough to stand up and do something. Lesson number two talks about um, emotion regulation leads to life regulation. Elias believed that we are constantly regulating our emotions and actions in response to the norms. JJ's diagnosis was a surprise. It was actually a deviation from what was ordinary. In fact, when 
I gave birth that day and I saw him first time in the nursery and heard about the diagnosis. I almost collapsed and I told God, I asked God, why me? I questioned him. However, as I was reflecting, I cannot just cry and sit without doing anything at all. I, I also cannot expect the world to always adjust for JJ. I do not want to sugarcoat, but it is a fact that he has developmental needs. And the only way to help him is to prepare him for the world. This is actually where the early intervention comes in. This is where the regulation comes in. And if I continue to be, um, if I continue to cry and be sorry of the situation, nothing will happen. That's lesson number two. Now we are down to our third lesson. Knowledge is power. For Elias, those who are in power actually have the influence over the dissemination of information. Although we are not powerful, like our family are not powerful in society because we are a nobody, but we actually use JJ's diagnosis to push for our advocacy and to educate people, especially on how to treat children with needs, and what we can do to help them maximize their full potential. In fact, we carry with us the message, see the child first, next the ability. So basically we wanted to send the message that all children regardless of their differences are special and all children deserve the best. Hoping that our policymakers will heed our call for sustainable special education programs. So that's lesson number two. one of the few lessons from Elias that lingers to me. We are diversified, yet we are one. JG may have given us a different experience from what other parents usually encounter. They say that it is the road less taken, the road less traveled, but because of his being differently able, we learn to humble ourselves, to ask for help, and to offer our help to those who need us. That's lesson number four. that change does not happen overnight. 
Elias believes that the process of social change is often slow and incremental, shaped by many small actions and interactions rather than dramatic shifts. This may be the last lesson that I have compiled from Elias' life, but this is actually one of my favorite. This is a constant reminder to me as a person, as a parent, as a wife, as a colleague, as a friend, that it is okay to be slow and there is nothing wrong if we take it slow for as long as we keep moving forward each day. I know that there are still so many things to be done, especially uh, for us uh, uh, parents with special needs and it gets overwhelming sometimes. However, I could not stop. Yes, I feel tired, but I just rest when I'm tired. And the following day, I wake up again and start over again. And I always keep the goal in mind that I wanted my son, JJ, to be able, not just to be able to, not just to exist, but most importantly, to live this beautiful life like anyone of us. So I would like to thank this opportunity, thank everyone for listening and for being with us tonight. It's been a privilege. Thank you everyone.